Hi guys, Chris Ario here with another ATC tutorial. Uh, this time on X-Plane 10's uh, ATC airport flows. So let's get right into it. So what is an airport flow? Uh, an airport flow is our implementation of what the FAA calls a runway use program in the real world. Um, it's basically a set of, of rules or conditions and, and when those rules or conditions uh, are met, um, we tell the sim which runways to make active at the airport in question. So it's uh, turning on or turning off certain runways and it can be done um, for departures, for arrivals, or both. So for example, you could say uh, this specific runway is active now just for departures while that runway is active just for arrivals or perhaps they're both active um, for both types of operations. In addition to determining which runways are active, um, an airport flow can also tell ATC which runway you want to use for the VFR and pattern runway um, for the current flow and whether or not it has left or right traffic. Now, x 10 doesn't currently support VFR traffic patterns, um, but we're trying to think ahead to the future here. So we've, we've put this data into the flows uh, so it's there when we, when we do support pattern runways. Um, in addition, an airport flow also tells HTC which, um, which runways are preferred for various types of traffic. So maybe one runway is, uh, you know, maybe a runway that they prefer only to have propeller traffic, single engine props on. Uh, another runway, maybe they, they try to keep the bigger guys, just the heavies and the jets on that runway. Um, so with flows, you can determine which types of aircraft use which types of runways. Uh, and lastly, a flow can tell the ATC system what initial heading after departure aircraft should get. And this is used a lot, uh, not just for sequencing and, and efficiency uh, of traffic flows, but also for noise abatement. You know, maybe off of runway 36, people immediately get a left turn heading 270 to avoid a, a noise sensitive area. So flows help us uh, tell the ATC system those kinds of details. So just some more facts about airport flows. Uh, any airport that has ATC services should have a flow. Um, some of the features of, of airport flows can be done without a control tower, but typically, you know, there's the ATC system doesn't do much at the non-towered airports. Um, so to take full advantage of it, you really should have a do this at an airport with an active control tower. Uh, flows are completely optional. You don't need them. If you don't create one as an airport author, the sim will generate its own for you. Um, but you know, we'll get to it in a second. It's it's preferred to make your own. And flows are not hard and fast rules. They are strong preferences. Um, ATC always has the final authority, and it may change from version to version what ATC does with the flow information. But you know, maybe someday an, an aircraft can declare emergencies. Um, obviously the flows are going to go out the window and ATC is going to assign whatever runway necessary for the pilot to make it down safely. So just keep in mind that flows are, are preferences, but they're not, they're not hard and fast rules. ATC may deviate from, from them from time to time. Okay, so why bother making a custom flow if the sim is going to make one for you? Well, the one the sim makes is going to be extremely basic. Um, it's only going to consider the wind direction and runway length. So when it chooses which runways become active, it's just going to pick the longest runway that's most aligned with the wind um, currently. It's not going to make any attempts to pick the runway that's most efficient for traffic or for the aircraft type in question. So it may put a 747 on a very narrow runway um, if it's long enough and if it's wind aligned, even though there's a, a giant runway that's not quite wind aligned that in the real world that, that aircraft would prefer. And also for departure headings, it's just going to do whatever ATC feels like. Um, it has no notion of noise abatement or any other reason you may use departure headings. So how do they work? So basically when you're authoring a new airport, um, the author creates a flow for every type of situation. I use the word situation loosely, but it's basically comes down to weather and time conditions. So for every kind of weather situation that you can imagine, um, maybe it's for an airport that just has one runway where it's runway 36 and 18, you know, you really only have two weather conditions to consider. You have weather conditions where the winds are out of the north and weather conditions where the winds are out of the south. 
Um, so for every type of situation you can have, you create a flow that determines which runways are active and under what conditions they're active for which types of aircraft. Um, so x is going to look at all the flows you have in order, and it's going to pick the first one it sees that meets all the conditions. And it's going to make that flow active as soon as possible. And I say as soon as possible because it's not instantly going to become active just because the weather changed. Um, you may have seen it before where the, where the winds will change and ATC decides to switch the runways around. It can't do it immediately because it has arrivals that are you know, coming in on final. It has people that are already taxied to the runway for departures. Um, as soon as it can, it will change the flows. So once it changes the flows, now it has a list of new runways that are now active. Um, so when you call up ATC or, or an artificial aircraft calls up ATC for either a departure or for a landing, um, ATC needs to choose the runway that it's going to use for that type of operation. It now only looks at the runways that, have, that are deemed active according to the active flow. So if the flow says, you know, well, I have five runways at the airport, but only these two are active currently, ATC will only pick from those two. Um, and the flow then stays in effect until the conditions change where another flow is now more preferable. So that's typically, um, you know, either related to weather, weather changes or, or time. So how does ATC choose a flow? Well, there's, there's really only four main things that it looks at to determine which flow is best. It looks at the current ceiling, the current visibility, the current wind direction and velocity, and the current time. So just a little more detail here. Once a flow becomes active, the flow determines which runways are currently active for use. Um, and then of the active runways, it decides which one to pick for the operation based on the operation type. So whether the whether somebody's asking for a departure or for an arrival, um, the aircraft's type, if it's a prop, if it's a turboprop, and what the on-course heading of the, uh, if for departures, what the on-course heading is. So if somebody's departing um, and immediately they're going to make a, a turn to the south to continue on course, then ATC may prefer a runway that's not quite wind aligned, but is more southerly um, to get the guy going on his way better. And this is these are all things that you, the airport author, set up with, with your flows. So for a really simple example, airport has one runway, it's runway 3618. Um, basically just based on the winds, these are decisions that a pilot would make instinctively, but you want to use the southerly runway, you want the winds to be out of the south. Otherwise, you want to use the, the northerly runway. So if you're going to make a very simple flow at a very simple airport, that's something you could do. So just to complicate things a little bit, um, maybe this airport has, uh, maybe it has a noise abatement procedure in effect, and maybe there's a, a noise sensitive area to the south of the airport. So let's say it's the same airport, it has the same runway, um, and we want the same rules. We want south winds to, to trigger the south runway to be active, north winds to trigger the north runway to be active, but only during the day. At nighttime, maybe we want to switch it up a little bit. So between 2200 Zulu and 0500 Zulu, we want runway 18 to be active only if the winds are between 120 and 240 and greater than 12 knots. And we want to issue a 270 heading, a uh, departure heading. Otherwise, we want to use runway 36. So this is an example where between certain hours of the night, we really only want to use that runway if it's really a, a much stronger headwind. Notice before we, we, I think we said between 090 and 270 for the uh, the wind direction. So we allowed some, some of, a, of a crosswind, whereas now we're saying it really needs to be a headwind and it really needs to be a strong headwind to use runway 18. Otherwise, we want to use runway 36 at night. And even if we're going to use runway 18, we want them to fly a heading of 270. So we want them to have a, a right turnout on departure to avoid maybe some noise sensitive area to the south of the airport. Okay, so let's complicate things a bit more now. So now maybe the airport has two runways. We have uh, runway 18 left, 36 right, and runway 18 right, 36 left. So once again, we'll set up the rules for each flow so that 
we always favor the southerly runways when there's southerly winds, and we favor the northerly runways, you know, the 3-6 right, 3-6 left, when there's more northerly winds. Um, but we can, we can add some more rules to, to complicate things a bit more and also provide more realistic flows. I mean, the, the whole goal of all this is to simulate what happens at, at some of the larger airports for efficiency and, and for flow. Um, so maybe the terminal is on the east side of the runway. I'm sorry, on the east side of the airport. So maybe they want to use 18 left and 36 right for arrivals. Um, you know, whether depending on whether it's a northerly or southerly flow, they always prefer that inside runway for arrivals so that arrivals can land, immediately ta taxi off the airport, and immediately be at their gates. So 18 left, 36 right are preferred for arrivals. The, that's the inner runway. The outer runway being 18 right, 36 left. Those are preferred for departures, um, except maybe helicopters. Maybe we always want helicopters to use the inner runway as well. So with flows, we can do that kind of thing. So maybe we want to add another rule and say that this airport only has one ILS. Therefore, when there's IFR conditions, people land on 36 right all the time, even in a tailwind. Um, you know, I'm just making this up, but maybe there are some airports that do this kind of thing. So you can put in a rule and set up the flow such that when it's IFR conditions at the field, 36 right is the only active runway for arrivals. Another thing you can do is you can say, well, if the winds are southerly and my aircraft is a heavy aircraft and he's departing, then I want him to get a 270 heading on departure only when it's between the hours of 2200 Zulu and 0500 Zulu. Um, so you can see, you can, you can have a very low level, very granular um, access to a lot of different rules and conditions. And you can really govern um, the flows pretty precisely at airports based on the operation type, based on the aircraft type, based on the winds, the, the ceiling, visibility, um, time of day. Uh, it all gets mixed in together. Uh, and you can really come up with a, a uh, precise uh, flow for that airport. So I think we're going to move on. Uh, I'm going to load up WED and then um, show you how to make some flows in World Editor.